Hey guys, welcome back to another Specic Adventure. Today, we're gonna to be switching to Mazda Speed diff mounts. So the reason we're switching my diff mounts is because um, in the last few track days that I've had with this car, um, I noticed that every time I am in third gear, high RPM, I would say about 6,000 to 6,500, um, and I'm about to shift into fourth, um, I noticed that it's locked out and I'm essentially not able to shift into fourth unless I lift off the gas a little bit to lessen the load on the car. My thinking is that um, there was too much movement somewhere in the drivetrain. Based on that reasoning, we decided to go ahead and do the diff mounts. Before we can actually remove the diff, right? There's like lots of bracings and stuff underneath the car. So the first thing we did is remove this brace. It's one whole piece, all right? So um, the bolts that are holding these on are 19s, really like, big boy bolts and so we took the big gun over there and try to zap it off some of them came off some of them did not budge at all so uh we took a breaker bar and that didn't come off and what we ultimately ended up having to do was take our fucking jack handle handle and stick it in the breaker bar and just whoop like that and it came right off disconnected the Cam what the fuck is this a called arm cam arm the camber arm. Hmm. Well, disconnected this, and also on the other side. And what's next? Uh, so we can uh, pull the axle away from the diff. And the reason why we had to do that is because this can now pivot outward on the on the top. Here's a progress check. We were able to get the axle, the right axle, out from the diff but we're really struggling with the left axle because the exhaust is in the way. Yep, and your shit is seized. Uh, yep, trying to get, and we also don't have a mid-size pry bar, just a really large one and a relatively big flathead screwdriver, <laughs> that's about it. Tiffany is breaking loose that dry shaft bolt right for, here. For, for the haters, just to let you know, Tommy broke it loose for me and then now I'm just pretending to get it off, okay? Okay. That chrome socket that you see right in the middle. Ooh, holy shit. Don't strip it. It felt kind of like... Oi. There you go. So after getting like those drive shaft bolts out, um, we went ahead and removed the two long bolts um, at the end of the PPF and uh, the PPF is not dropping right now because there are sleeves that's being still locked it in to the diff so you need to like find a way to like pull the sleeve like away from the PPF um, when looking up how to remove when looking up how to remove um, the diff from the PPF, lots of people have an issue with removing the collars, one on the bottom and two on the top for both of these bolts, right? And um, a lot of the, if you go on a lot of the threads and forums and stuff, people will tell you to use like a hammer, a chisel, a screwdriver, a pry bar, whatever, right? We did have to use a hammer and chisel. In the beginning, we were using a screwdriver and this type of like chisel, um, although the head is, as you can see, a little bit fatter so on the bottom collar there's actually notches on either side that you can dig into the side of that to chisel it out but what actually ended up finding helpful that really worked for us was actually these types of chisels um, the lip of this chisel here is actually a little bit thinner and it really allows you to dig into that like hook on that lip right here um, and these are actually from an air hammer set um, that I got for uh, doing my bushing. And then after you get that out, you can feed both of these bolts back into the holes and use a hammer and essentially tap the bolt head and these two collars at the top will pop out. Here it is.
I'm looking at the general overall mounts on both sides. They look pretty good. Like it doesn't look like anything is cracked or it's not even hard actually. It's like it still feels like cushiony. <laughs> now I'm thinking if I put in the comp mounts, I wonder if it, that really will help the issue or if the issue is somewhere else. So we've already put in one of the mounts and um, it took about 30 minutes or so with some very DIY things that we, con contraption that we created. But um, what I found to really help is um, prior to actually trying to press in the mount, um, Tommy thought of this genius idea to put a hose clamp around it because you know how when the mounts come this part's not compressed right it's kind of open so um not only do you have to make sure it goes in straight you also have to kind of you know somehow make sure that's going in as a circle right so in order to make sure that it's in a circular shape before you even put it in you can use a hose clamp to kind of compress the gap openings first and then you can do it like this and this hose clamp this hose clamp actually acts as um, almost a, a line for you to see if you're pressing the mount down straight or not once you kind of have it further down then you can like loosen it and move this hose clamp up and eventually you can just remove the hose clamp overall as you press it down and prior to drive it in you can put some WD-40 around the um, diff itself where the mount will sit in. So here's the setup. Hose clamp here. You have one plate on the bottom, one plate on the top. Some uh, stacking washers on both ends. The locking nut on the bottom end and the nut that you will be essentially turning at the top as you're pressing it down. See the little bushing nubs are sticking out so just make sure that if your plate has these little holes um, you're centering it directly in the hole and not halfway or else these little parts it might cut off the little nubs. So obviously the star of the show was the air hammer, right? Like literally got that shit out in like under 30 seconds. Um, I will link to the video of where I got that idea from um, in the description. Also in the description is this air punch attachment for the air hammer, okay? Um, so originally, I decided to be cheap at Harbor Freight and I bought this like set that had this tiny like punch thing but with like a sharp end. But because this tip is so pointy and so small, it actually was just wandering all over the mount and it didn't do anything. So the right tool is not this, it is this. You need this, okay? This has kind of like a very flat end and it's thick. Um, attaches directly to the air hammer like that okay and then um, at Harbor Freight the only option I saw was a set of these and it was like $70 or some shit you don't need all that okay link in the description I have I bought this on Amazon for like $10 that was a pretty quick job actually punching out the thing took pretty quick well obviously you can only use the air hammer if you have an air compressor but I think if you're working on cars enough and you have a place for that uh, I think air compressor is a life changer and we've been doing just fine with a little pancake one um, I think for these types of jobs um, where you're not really like having a shop or anything like that I think that pancake size actually works just fine mm -hmm. I mean, WD first.
just hook on from the back here like that and it just pull it out. Just check once in a while that everything is going okay. So after much maneuvering, we finally got the diff up there. Um, there is no other way than to just somehow bench your diff uh, over the exhaust um, and fit one side of the axle in and then the other side. Um, there's just very little room and clearance over there, especially needing to um, clear your PPF, clear the axles, clear the exhaust, clear the arms, just lots of stuff to clear. Um, so we spent, I think, about an hour going back and forth and um, somehow was able to get it in there. Um, yeah, I think it might be a little bit easier if we had like a transmission jack so that we can keep the diff stabilized when it was going up um, but we don't so we managed with a regular floor jack um, so now we are just uh, you know putting all the nuts and bolts back looking up torque spec things like that um, and uh, we're gonna go ahead later on uh, fill in some um, gear oil into the diff and we should be good to go So as you guys heard, uh, looks like power steering is next. Film in Mexico. <laughs> Feels good. Um, for sure, uh, we're sitting at a stoplight right now. Um, there are more vibration through yeah, the butt. The butt. Yeah, through the butt. Before, before with just the stiffer motor mount, like mo you can feel it, but it's Master more Motorsport. Yeah, Master Motorsport mount with the stock uh, diff mount. You just feel it in the front, just the dashboard vibrating. Right now, with the motor mount and the diff mount, you also now feel it through the butt. You feel it underneath. Underneath. And, and also like as a passenger earlier when you um, do a little pull on that straight um, the car felt uh, more like it could put more power down I don't, I don't know about like that. <laughs> you can feel more for sure through the diff and through the road for sure everything just feels like more connected right now I, I don't know about that I, I, I just think um, I mean so far just like driving on public roads it just the gear shifts just feel a little bit more buttery I don't know if that's like, I don't know if it's like a placebo effect type of thing. <laughs> so after we were able to put in the diff, everything else uh, was just you know, putting the things that we took off back onto the car. The hardest part really was just fitting in the axle to the diff. 
um, and uh, essentially getting the axle to seat into the seal. And what needed and ended up happening was we kind of just slammed it in using the um, brake hub. Uh, so essentially just get a hold of the brake hub, make sure like the, the, you know, like where the spline, where the spline looking part of it, uh, of the axle is like seated properly in the uh, hole of the seal, right? And literally just fucking go to town and slam it in. Um, and once it's in, everything else is just a matter of bolting things up. And we've come to the end of the video. Um, if you have any questions about um, the entire like process of the diff mount installation, feel free, as always, to leave it down in the comments below. Uh, product links will be in the description box, so check there before you ask me. Thank you very much for watching, and stay tuned for more Specic Adventure. Bye!